Good morning friends. Welcome to this session on evolution strategies. First of all, I would like to thank Iben and Smith for their presentation made available online. I have made changes to their presentation to make this video lecture, so I am thankful to them. I have also referred their book Introduction to Evolutionary Computing. So thanks again. So let us start with evolution strategies. In evolution strategies we will learn parent selection, mutation, recombination and survival selection. We have to select the parents. Here the uniform random distribution is used to select the parents. That is the parent selection is not based on the fitness of the parent but every individual from population has the same probability to be selected. So if we have mu number of parents then every parent will have the probability 1 upon mu. Mutation here we have to go for the real value encoding and we have to mutate on the real valued chromosomes. So first the question arises is why to mutate? We have a solution that is apparent and we want to make some changes to get a new solution that is the offspring with better fitness. So this we are doing in search of the better solutions. So let us have one example why we should go for the mutation. So here is one chromosome which shows the ingredients for a dish, particular dish. So ingredient 1, 2, 3 and 4 ingredients are there and the fitness function for this chromosome is the test of the dish prepared. So what we'll do by mutation in this chromosome for ingredient of dish is will vary or tune the ingredients all the ingredients to get the better test so we may increase some ingredient or we may decrease some ingredient to vary the test of the particular dish so this is the real life example of the mutation so now how we are doing mutation in the evolutionary strategies so in evolutionary strategies mutation is done on the real values. So for that we have to add a small number z which is drawn from the normal distribution to the selected values that is xi. So we have to add small number z or we have to subtract the small number z from the xi and this is called as mutation. So here it is shown that this is a z and we have to find out the z on this axis that can be added to xi. So here is the pseudocode. Uh, so we have this parent chromosome x1 dash 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 xn at the time quantum t and now we have drawn zi from the normal distribution curve for xi. So xi at time quantum t plus zi which we have drawn from the normal distribution curve is added to get the y at time t. So if this fitness of this y of t is greater than the uh, this one then we have to select it as a new offspring as the fitness is better and this is called successful mutation when the offspring is having better fitness value than the parent then we call the mutation is successful So here the mutation mechanism is given z value drawn from the normal distribution. 
function n xi comma sigma so mean xi is set to 0 and the sigma is there variation sigma is called mutation step size so how much mutation step size is there that will be decided by the sigma to get the adequate variation in offspring so we want multiple variations in the offspring so to get it adequately to get it adequately the to get the variation adequately in offspring we have to vary the sigma as sigma is varied we get the adequate variation in the offsprings sigma is varied on the fly by the one fifth success rule so we'll discuss the one fifth success rule after two three slides so this is the normal distribution this is mean represented by xi and the standard deviation sigma so mutate first so what is the net mutation effect we have this parent x and the uh, mutation step size sigma and after mutation we get x dash and sigma dash so first we have to mutate the sigma to get sigma dash and then we have to mutate x to get x dash where x dash is equal to x plus n of 0 comma sigma dash so if x dash if fitness of x dash is good means x dash is good and sigma dash is good if x dash is good okay so what we have to check here if the fitness of the offspring is more means the mutation is good and mutation is good means the sigma step size mutation is good so what is one fifth success rule so if we are getting mutation success rate more than 20 percent then we need to expand the search space okay if the success rate is more than 20 percent then the search space should be expanded it should be increased to make the wider search and if the ratio is less than 1 by 5 means the if the mutation success rate is less than 20 percent then it should be decreased to concentrate the search more around the current location so if the success rate is less than 20 percent that is 1 by 5 then it should be decreased to concentrate the search space more around the current location here we are talking about increasing and decreasing of the sigma and this is based on the success of the mutation if the fitness value of the offspring is more if the fitness value of the offspring is more than the parent then it is said that the mutation is successful so how one fifth success rule works we are given with c so c is greater than 0.8 and less than or equal to 1 so uh, we can put the value of c like 0 0.8 0 0.8 1 to 1 so what is ps ps is the percentage of successful mutations and as we have already seen successful mutation is child is fitter than the parent then we say that the mutation is successful
so if the if the mutations are successful more than 20 percent then sigma is equal to sigma divided by c and this is the range of c so for example i have image uh, i have uh, shown this as an example from this chart so expand the search space it will expand the search space so if the success rate is more than 20 percent sigma is equal to sigma divided by c and this is the range of c from point 0.8 to 1 so we have to divide the sigma from point 0.8 to c any number between point 0.8 to 1 and if it is less then we have to multiply sigma with c and if the success rate is 20 percent then sigma will not change sigma will become same this is called the one fifth success rule so this is another case of mutation where the the chromosome is having only one sigma here the chromosome is having only one sigma so there is no change only formula is change to calculate the sigma dash that is mutation of sigma so this is the formula exponential of tau into this normal distribution function so what is this tau is nothing but the learning rate which is inversely proportional to 1 upon n that is inversely proportional to 1 upon square root of n and again we have this boundary value sigma dash that is mutated value of sigma is less than the mean implies that sigma dash is equal to mean so this is the boundary value rule uh, the boundary value rule keeps the sigma around the mean 